Oh, Skyrim, one of my favorite games of all time. I'll never forget all of the memories we made together. We saved the world three times at least, we made a lot of friends, and we ate a lot of cheese. As we finally get a new Bethesda game with Starfield, I think that it's time that we retire Skyrim, knowing that we've done everything there is to do. Wait, what? Oh crap. If I want to be able to say that I've done everything in Skyrim, then obviously I need every achievement. After some careful research, it seems like we could get all of the achievements in a single playthrough, and it'll only take... Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend 11 years getting all of the achievements when Starfield is just about to come out. If I want to get all of them, I'll need to be better. I'll need to be stronger. I'll need to be faster. I need to be the first person to do a Skyrim 100% achievement speedrun. <laughs> oh, I thought I was about to burn to a crisp. Oh, okay. Dude. <laughs> Talk about seven minutes in heaven, holy. This was such a bad idea. I thought it'd be funny, but it wasn't worth it. There's no way that any human is designed to do this. While we wait through this intro for the final time, let me take care of some clerical work. There are 75 achievements in Skyrim, 50 in the base game, 10 in both Dragonborn and Dawnguard DLCs, and 5 in the Hearthfire DLC. These achievements range from obvious ones like finish the main quest or get a skill to 100, and less obvious ones like change your face or craft an item out of Stalrim or have 100,000 gold. Before I started, I knew I couldn't rush in blind. On top of some of the achievements being difficult, there are some achievements that are simply impossible to get based on the choices that you make. That's why I made this four page long document that outlines the route that I would need to follow in order to get every achievement. This isn't the exact order that we'll be getting them in, like discover 100 locations could really happen at any time, but most of the route should be followed in order to get the achievements as fast as possible like doing the Civil War quest line before finishing the main quest, because it lets you skip the hour-long peace treaty cutscene. Now that we've got a plan, we can start our journey. And first thing on the list is... be a woman? An orc woman to be exact. Like I said, there are a lot of things that may seem weird, but we need to do them to go as fast as possible. So, as our hero, which my Twitch chat very adamantly wanted to be named Harry the Platypus, is about to be executed, this sweet pea Alduin comes and saves us, and the timer starts as soon as we get control of our character. After a bit of dipping, diving, and dodging, we make our way into Helgen Keep, where we get free of our binds and take out some Imperials. Before we continue though, we need to grind a bit. If we can kill most bandits and Draugr in one hit, it'll make this whole speedrun a lot faster. So we start whacking Rayloth to level up our one-handed. Cheese. We, we're allowed to use whatever cheese we want. This isn't the, the typical Edge Omega, legendary difficulty, no followers, glitchless, none of that here. We're doing whatever we can to beat this as fast as possible. A few minutes later and we hit level 30 one handed, meaning that we shouldn't have to worry about combat for a while. Let's level up. We're going to be putting our stuff into Magicka. And this is for a reason that you will learn in many, many hours. Okay. As we continue forward, we unlock a few cells, starting our progress towards the Thief achievement, which requires us to pick 50 locks and 50 pockets. We then sprint through the rest of the dungeon, and once we make it out, we get our very first achievement, Unbound. We continue forward to the Guardian Stones and choose the Warrior Stone, giving us the achievement Blessed. This is also a step towards the Standing Stone achievement, requiring us to find all 13 of them, but we'll worry about that later. In the meantime, we inform Girder about the dragon attack and head to Bleak Falls Barrow, killing most of the bandits on the way in one hit. Once inside, we take care of some more bandits and read our first skillbook, meaning that we're a 50th of the way done with the reader achievement for reading 50 skillbooks. We sprint the rest of the way through Bleak Falls and get our very first shout, which is a part of a couple achievements, Word of Power and Thum Master. We then take care of the boss Draugr, take the Dragonstone, and dip out to Whiterun. Hello guard, we need to intimidate this guy. We need to persuade this guy, never mind. It's an achievement to successfully bribe, intimidate, and persuade. So we just got our persuade, we still need a bribe and an intimidate now. 
but I don't exactly know where to get those. Like I said, since we persuaded that guard, we're a third of the way to the snake tongue achievement. We then head to the Jarl, who tells us that Farangar's got a quest for us, and we just so happen to have the exact thing that he wanted. With another achievement down, we're sitting at three achievements in about 30 minutes. And at this pace, it'll only take us about 12 and a half hours to do this whole challenge, right? Sure. Right now though, we need to go fight our first dragon. We make light work of it, absorbing its soul and getting the dragon soul achievement. After we go tell the Jarl about our good work, he tells us that we should talk to the old farts at High Hrothgar. I then accidentally try to murder him. You heard the summons. What else could it mean? I didn't mean to do, to do that. <laughs> put, put the weapon away. Put the weapon away. <laughs> I can't be trusted. But he's kind enough to still make us Thane, giving us access to our new best friend Lydia. Here is where our route deviates from a regular playthrough, and we head to Solitude to the Bard's College, where we find a book called The Ethereum Wars, starting the Lost of the Ages quest. For those who don't know, this is a quest introduced in the Dawnguard DLC, and I had no clue it even existed until researching my route. Get a grip. Oh. You guys... <laughs> Did you guys hear that? That wasn't like in my head or something, right? This is a whopper of a quest. We need to clear multiple Dwimmer and Falmer dungeons. Falmer? I hardly know her, right guys? <laughs> oh, we have fun here. In order to get four Ethereum shards. In the process, we reach level 5, giving us the achievement Apprentice. We fail at this puzzle for a couple of minutes. Top left. Top left. You're kidding me. Uh. Uh. There's no way that any human is designed to do this. Maybe this is better. Oh! I'm the best. And we get our new best friend, Harry the Platypus's horse. After an unlucky lockpick. Okay. I have to get this right now or I'm going to hell. One more try. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Guys! And a wrong button press. Ooh. Oh my. I thought I was about to burn to a crisp. That was so scary. We need to solve a puzzle by removing human bones from some gears. Cool. The rest of the Ethereum shards are uneventful, and once we get all four, we're given access to the forge. In here, we basically need to play Call of Duty zombies and defend against waves of dwarven spheres and spiders. Once we defeated them all, the boss decides to show up, who we then kill in about 6 seconds, thanks to our orcish racial ability. Finally, we now get to the resolution of this quest, where we can forge a rare artifact, the Ethereum Crown. We did all of this for the Lost to the Ages achievement by completing this quest, but it doubles as giving us one of the strongest items in the game. With the Ethereum Crown, we're able to have two standing stones active at the same time. So, after picking up the Lover Stone, we now have a 35% increased experience gain for our combat skills. Now that that's done, we can continue with the main quest. After a little snag on the way to High Hrothgar... Oh! Okay! Sure, Parthenax, do something about that! We talk to Arngear, who teaches us a couple shouts, and tells us to get some Dusty Musty Horn. With this, we get the The Way of the Voice achievement, and we head to Ustengrav. In here, we take out some wizards and are about to attack some Draugr when this happens. Dude. You know what? It was to be expected that uh, that Skyrim would crash at least once. So we make our way back through the dungeon, picking up a new shout and retrieving the horn. Oh, never mind, someone stole it. They left us a note saying to head to Riverwood and they must have hired some cultists to kill us. Oh, never mind. Someone else hired those cultists. Whatever. But like a lot of things in the speedrun, we'll deal with it later. Right now, we return the gold claw to this nice man, finishing off the first of 10 side quests we need for the sideways achievement. We then head to a local inn and find out that the innkeeper stole the horn and wants me to help fight the dragons. Sure lady, whatever. As long as you don't turn out to secretly be a part of another cult about dragons. We then enchant a sword and make a potion, meaning that we only need to smith something in order to get the artificer achievement. 
This streamer is a verified liar. Since we forged the Aetherian Crone, we just got the Artificer achievement. After we dip, we again take a break from the main quest and instead, we head for something more exotic. In order to get there, we intimidate a poor sailor into giving us passage, meaning we only need to bribe someone now for Snake Tongue. Once we get there, we get the Outlander achievement and we make a beeline for Raven Rock Mine. In here, we do a quest to get a cool sword, kill a dragon priest, learn the first word of dragon aspect, and read a black book. We're going to need to read five of these for the hidden knowledge achievement, and this one gives a reward that'll help us a bunch early on. You see, at the end of this black book, we get the Lover's Insight passive, letting us deal 10% more damage to the opposite sex. Because all of the bosses we're going to fight are male, this means boss fights will be 10% faster for the rest of the speedrun. Like I said, we do a lot of little things now to make things faster down the line. Now that we've done that, we head back to Skyrim and start the Companions Guild questline. There are achievements for each faction in Skyrim, so we'll need to get around to all of them eventually. It just makes the most sense to do this one first. After fighting this guy and doing some chores, we become a companion, giving us the first of their achievements, Take Up Arms. We then do a couple more jobs for them and find out that they're all actually werewolves. What? That... No way that just happened. That's... That's crazy. After a couple more jobs, they decide it's finally time to make me a werewolf, and we get the achievement Blood Oath. Now that we're a werewolf, we need to be feeding on as many bodies as possible. You see, Dongard added an achievement for getting all 11 werewolf perks, and to get them, we need to feed on a total of 165 bodies. Thankfully for us, the Silver Hand will be supplying us with a lot of bodies to feed on. While we continue with the Companion's questline, we reach level 10, giving us the Adept achievement. Also, apparently the leader of the Companions doesn't like being a cool and awesome werewolf, so we need to go kill his wolf spirit. After doing this, we finish the Companions Guild and get the achievement Glory of the Dead. Now that all of that drama is over with, we can continue with the main quest. We head to where Delphine told us to meet, and we manage to kill the dragon before it can even grow its skin back. This is when Delphine goes all crazy conspiracy theory on us and claims that the Thalmor might be bringing dragons back to life? Sure lady, whatever. She wants us to infiltrate the Thalmor embassy with the help of her really weird friend. Your job is to get into the party without being fingered as a spy. I'll take care of the rest. Without being what? No, don't say that. No, you can't say that. No, just just say without being figured out that I'm a spy. No, not to say that I'm I'm fingered by it as Your a spy. Job is to get into the party without being <laughs> no. fingered as a spy. Don't, stop saying that. I'm talking about me getting fingered. Once we do this, we get an achievement and we learn of some dude named Esbern who Delphine now wants us to save from, you guessed it, the Thalmor. In the process of doing this, we bribe a guard, finally giving us the Snake Tongue achievement. We start the Thieves Guild by ruining this guy's life. And in the Ragged Flagon, we talk with the Face Changer where we get the A New You achievement. Uh, okay, I actually don't care about changing. I think I look perfect as is. After returning Esbern to his rightful owner, they want us to go to Skyhaven Temple where we demolish an entire Forsworn clan and deal half of this dragon's health with a single hit. <laughs> oh my god. After making our way through the temple, we learn that we need to use a shout to defeat Alduin, the destroyer of worlds. But more importantly, we get an achievement, Alduin's Wall. We now need to head back to High Rothgar to learn the shout but before we do that, we need to do something else. There's an achievement for completing 50 miscellaneous objectives. It's easy to get in a normal playthrough, but in a speedrun, we just don't have time for all that. Instead, we're going to abuse the game mechanics. You see, the miscellaneous objectives don't need to be unique, and there are a few instances where we can complete the same objective multiple times. In this instance, we're helping Klimek deliver supplies. So each time we deliver the supplies, it counts as another miscellaneous objective. So after putting the supplies in and taking the supplies out a bunch of times, hey uh, chat, remind you of anything? This is, uh, this is how my uh, my date with your mom went. A lot of a lot of putting in and taking out. If you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, we have fun here. We get the hero of the people achievement. Now that we're done with that, we talk with the old dudes who teach us the final word of unrelenting force, giving us the words of power achievement. They also teach us clear skies, which lets us climb to the tippy top of the mountain, where we get to speak with their leader, Parthenax. Unfortunately, he doesn't know the Alduin killing shout, 
but he knows where we can find it. First, we need to find an Elder Scroll, and to get it, we need to talk to this freaky guy in the middle of nowhere. He gives us some cool toys and tells us to buzz off the Blackreach, which we are now very intimately familiar with. After making our way through waves of Dwimmer and Falmer, we finally reach the Elder Scroll, giving us the achievement Elder Knowledge and marking the end of our first day of the speedrun. You. Starting day two, we pick up where we left off and go read the Elder Scroll, throwing us back in time to learn the Shout Dragonrin, which we then use to kill Alduin. Okay, well, <laughs> that was quick. He's not dead dead, he just flew away. In the current timeline of things, we need to finish the main quest, but before that, we need to do the Civil War. This is because if the Civil War is finished, we can skip the long season unending quest. It doesn't end there though. Before we can start the Civil War quest, we need to do all the Dawnguard DLC in order to become a Master Vampire. We need to do this because the Civil War quests alone will give us enough bodies, 165 like werewolves, to get all 11 perks for the Vampire Mastered achievement. So before we go chase him down, we need to go join the Dawnguard. We decide that it's time to upgrade our follower, so we ditch Lydia for our new best friend, this hunk Farkas, and head to investigate some vampires. Apparently. They're trying to hunt down an Elder Scroll that just so happens to be attached to our new best friend, Serana. After freeing her, we get the Awakening achievement, and we need to transport her back to her home of Castle Volkihar. On our way there, we decide to take out a dragon, which then crashes the game. Thankfully, we're able to kill it after round 2 though. 160 gold though. Sheesh. Come on! Dude, entire playthrough is just going to be me fighting that dragon for a trillion years. Okay, third time's the charm, and this time we're able to kill it. No, never mind. Apparently, this dragon is an agent of Bethesda trying to prevent me from showcasing my skills. And we're just going to leave, you know? It's, uh, we don't want to overstay our welcome here. So, avoiding the dragon this time, we head straight to the castle where we deny Lord Harkon's gift of vampirism because we still need to get the remaining werewolf perks. He doesn't like that one bit and banishes us back to the Dawnguard. Isaron is crying about the fact that I gave an Elder Scroll to the Dawnguard's mortal enemies and wants me to recruit some old friends. Sure dude, whatever. While we're doing that, we loot a chest and... Elemental Fury? That's actually really good. Oh! Yes! Meridia's Beacon! A new hand touches the beacon. Legendary. Alright, let's do this. After solving the puzzle and taking out some shades, we pick up Dawnbreaker. This gives us the Daedric Influence achievement, and Dawnbreaker is by far the strongest weapon we'll get this challenge. Because we have to fight so many undead over the course of the speedrun, the passive effect for Dawnbreaker is an amazing bonus to the already awesome stats of the sword. Now that the most iconic quest in the game is over, we finished recruiting for the Dawnguard and Serana makes another appearance because her dad's gone total wackadoo. Since none of us can read the Elder Scroll, we head out to go find one, and there just so happens to be one in this cave filled with vampires. We beat the Moth Priest into submission and take him back to the Dawnguard, where he reads the scroll and tells us about some boring prophecy about the end of the world. Yada yada yada, we need to go fetch another Elder Scroll, but it's been hidden where only the most genius person could ever find it. It's in Castle Volkihar. After exploding some undead with Dawnbreaker and solving a puzzle, we show Serana who's boss, Tyr, and then open a portal to the Soul Gem world where Serana's mom has been holed up. We can't go in there as we are though, so Serana sucks our soul and we're safe to enter. You must help me find my okay. Like Arbeck? More like, uh... More like, uh... Our... Uh, I'll I'll just go fuck myself. I'm sorry. I I shouldn't have wasted your time like that. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> hey, it's Arvac. Uh, sorry for, I uh, I should just let it go. That was awkward. I think that I played it off pretty cool though. We meet up with Mom, take out the Soul Prison Guards, and we head into the Boneyard to kill a dragon. That's pure for some reason, whatever. 
Valerica gives us her Elder Scroll and we're finally able to get out of this episode of Supernatural. Before we go, the dragon we just killed resurrected himself and was all like, real recognize real, summon me in the real world and I'll repay you. And I was all like, sure dude, whatever. All cool like. We then GTFO and return to the real world where we get the achievement Beyond Death. Unfortunately, getting the Elder Scroll was completely pointless because our Moth Priest went blind from reading the last one. Because of this, all hope is lost and the world is gonna end. Nope, never mind. Apparently, it's possible for us to read the Elder Scroll, we just need to go Moth Mode? I'm not really sure what that means, but I'll do whatever it takes at this point to finish the speedrun. So we head to the Ancestral Glade and go Moth Mode, and that lets us read the Elder Scroll, which reveals itself to be a map. We then get bugged and our game prevents us from leaving, meaning that we can't continue and the run is over. Just kidding. We actually just waste about 7 minutes trying to figure out what's going on before eventually just reloading the save. This time everything goes smoothly and we head to where the Elder Scroll pointed to, Darkfall Cave. In here we have a good opportunity to mine some ore, meaning that we're a third of the way done with the hard worker achievement. After navigating through the cave, we meet one of the last remaining snow elves. This dude looks like an Oblivion character the way that he's, he's shaded. We're then given access to a portal room and we now need to survive Darkfall Passage? Surely that's just like a joke or something. It turns out that's not a joke. And this is Falmer Paradise. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We had to spend about 15 minutes alone just mowing down Falmer. A few cool things to note though, we encounter the coolest dragon fight in the whole game and we decide to kill this frost giant just for the full Dawnguard experience. After surviving Darkfall Passage, we're given access to the Inner Sanctum and the boss fight begins. Phase 1 is super easy, we just go into werewolf mode and most of the ice dudes die in one hit. Phase 2 however is much more difficult. <laughs> I was expecting it to be a little bit harder. <laughs> I uh, I think that uh, we might be a little bit strong. <laughs> Never mind. Now that Mr. Evil Snow Elf is dead, Mr. Nice Snow Elf shows up and rewards us with the big bad weapon of the Dawnguard DLC, Oriel's Bow. Okay. Now if we do this. That's right. Achievement unlocked. Use the special power of Oriel's bow. Now it's just smiting down everything around us. This thing is crazy. We then summon Dernavir, who teaches us the Soul Tear shout, which also gives us the achievement Soul Tear. They really couldn't have come up with more clever names for these, huh? Before we finish the Dawnguard quest, we decide that we should get the rest of the werewolf perks out of the way. So we spend half an hour clearing out various bandit camps and dungeons, and we finally get the final perk, marking off the Werewolf Mastered Achievement. Now that that's over, we can go ahead and finish the Dawnguard quest. After a laughably easy final boss fight, we get the Kindred Judgment Achievement, and we let Serana turn us into a vampire. So, like I mentioned before, we had to do all of this before we did the Civil War, because now we'll have a lot of bodies to feast on. We head to Solitude, join the Imperials because you guys voted for them, and after clearing out a bandit camp, we get the Taking Sides achievement. Next up, we need to go retrieve the Jagged Crown for some reason that I skipped over and don't care about, and we get the feast on a bunch of Stormcloaks in the process. After some weird segment of threatening Ulfric Stormcloak and delivering messages, White runs under attack and we get Thanksgiving dinner served up right on a platter. This is why the Civil War is good for us. We then go on the offensive and we start farming. Because of the way capturing quartz works, your allies will respawn infinitely, and since we're in Vampire Lord form, nothing we do will give us a bounty. So we suck the Imperials dry for every last drop. Unfortunately, the Stormcloaks died before we were able to finish off our Vampire perks, but after one more fort we get the last one, letting us very quickly mark off the Vampire Mastered achievement. Taking this fort also gives us the War Hero achievement, meaning that we just got a 2 for 1 special. After doing some more work for the Imperials, we're ready to finally take over Skyrim. And after invading Windhelm, we land the final blow on Ulfric, giving us the Hero of Skyrim achievement. Now that the Civil War is over, we can continue the main quest. Bear in mind, all of these hours of work had to be done in this order to most efficiently save 10 minutes for the Peace Treaty quest. 
So now that there's no civil war, the Jarl is willing to help us trap a dragon in Whiterun, and after doing so, we get the Fallen achievement. This dragon is willing to help us get to Alduin, and all we need to do is go through this long Draugr dungeon. Dawnbreaker makes this trivial enough, and thanks to our speedrun tactics, we're able to whirlwind sprint past the gatekeeper to Sovngarde. Now we're finally in the endgame. We take out the Guardian of the Hall of Valor, get the help of the Ancient Nord heroes, and begin the final fight. And we kill Alduin on the first cycle. With that, we beat the game, and we get the final achievement, Dragon Slayer. Just kidding, we're not even halfway done yet. As we start day 3, we realize that we've got a really slow day ahead of us. Pretty much, today is dedicated solely to the 9 achievements for the remaining factions, Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, and the College of Winterhold. Since there's no time like the present, we jump right in with the Thieves Guild. The Thieves Guild has been facing some tough times, so they're jumping at the opportunity for a new recruit. In order to prove our worth, we harass some citizens and the guild declares us worthy granting us the taking care of business achievement. Next up, we get a job where we need to sneak into an estate to steal from a safe without anyone seeing. We don't have time for that, so we kill everyone and clear out the safe, finding out that an anonymous person is conspiring against the Thieves Guild. When we head back, we get the Explorer achievement for discovering 100 locations, and we then head to Whiterun for the next quest, and I don't know why, but something feels off about it. What the hell is going on? <laughs> has this place been flooded? What's going on here? Uh, okay. We don't have time to uh, worry about the trials and tribulations that the Whiterun people are going through. <laughs> oh god. This guy wants us to take out a competitor of a Thieves Guild benefactor by poisoning their mead. And in the process, we find another note from the same person that wrote the first one. The leader of the guild, Mercer Frey, thinks that we should go investigate one of the guild's old contacts to see if they know anything. Then we need to do the second most boring quest in the game and wait for this guy to slowly walk through this warehouse. I'm not kidding, it's practically a 5 minute cutscene. It might be more interesting if you had to stay hidden, but no. You can just kill all the guards in broad daylight and this guy doesn't put any pep in his step. So after that's done, we kill some bandits that are protecting this guy and he decides to help us out by telling us that the person we're after is Carlia, the person who murdered the previous guildmaster. After relaying this information back to Mercer, he says that we need to go take her out and we need to go to where she betrayed them. Once we make it there, we take out some Draugr before entering the final room where she kills us. Just kidding, she just poisoned us. We then find out that Mercer Frey was the bad guy this whole time and then he kills us. Just kidding. Carlia's poison actually prevented us from bleeding out, and now she wants our help to take him down. She's got a journal with a lead, but it's written in Ancient Falmer for some reason. That's convenient because we happen to know an Ancient Falmer. Never mind. We need to go on a long quest to translate this because this quest was made before the Dawnguard DLC came out. After translating it, we find out that the guild hasn't been down on their luck. Mercer Frey's been stealing money from them. It also mentions something about the Twilight Sepulcher but we'll get to that later. In the meantime, we present our findings to the rest of the Thieves Guild, and we go on a mission to figure out where Mercer is hiding, and we're gonna do that by getting into his house. After some quick thinking, we're able to bypass the fence using Whirlwind Sprint, and we head down to his secret basement, where he just so happens to have a huge document lying out describing his exact plan and where he's going, right next to the lusty Argonian maid. Mercer, you dirty dog, you. Before we can chase him down, we need to become Nightingales. During the induction ceremony though, Serana gets up to her usual hijinks. This is so deep and impactful, and I'm really enriched in the lore of this scenario. Your terms were struck long ago. She's a jump scare. Thankfully, Nocturnal doesn't hold it against us, and we officially become Nightingales meaning that we're now ready for the big boss. Unfortunately for us, the big boss is at the end of a very long Palmer dungeon. Luckily for us, we're super overpowered. Okay, so after recovering from that, we find Mercer Frey taking out this gemstone eyeball, and after a very riveting fight, 
we kill him and take the skeleton key. Nocturnal wants the skeleton key back though, so after making our way through the Twilight Sepulchre, Nocturnal approves our work and gives us the Darkness Returns achievement. And we're now ready for the next segment, the Dark Brotherhood. After breaking into this kid's house, we don't say a word, and he asks us to kill some old lady. Unfortunately, that old lady works at an orphanage, and we give a bunch of kids lifelong trauma. In front of the kids. In front of the kids, you guys. Someone has killed Uh, sorry, kids. Uh, have a have a good day. Content with an honest day's work, we take a nap and have one of the weirdest dreams ever. Okay, maybe it's not a dream. Astrid wants us to figure out who has a contract out for them, but we don't have time for that and kill the unlucky Khajiit that was nearest to us. Astrid likes our style and invites us to her murder cult, which we happily oblige. After this weird interaction with a door, what is the music of life? Um, silence, my brother. You now I prefer like uh, like R and B, uh, maybe some Midwest emo, but you know, sure. Uh, uh, silence. At last. I I could well, understand why someone would like silence. We then talk to Astrid, and we're officially part of the Dark Brotherhood, granting us the with friends like these achievement. We now need to do a few contract killings and get intimately close with the Night Mother. Am I gonna, oh, talk about seven minutes in heaven, holy. Me and Night Mother are getting a little bit uh, down and dirty in the sarcophagus. <laughs> she then tells us that we are the chosen one or whatever and Cicero starts flipping out. Whatever, we need to go kill some dude and in the process we get ambushed by a dragon. Once it's over with, we kill the contract and... What the fuck are you doing? What is Serana doing? What? Serana? You need to to follow the rules of the road. Come on, use your use your legs. Put that away, Serana. You're freaking me out. Uh, okay. Slay, I guess. <laughs> Our next target is the most genius out of all of them, as he just stands in this tavern playing his flute 24-7, never giving us a good opportunity to kill him. Thankfully, we're too smart for that, and we shield bash him to make him angry, and Tirana finishes him off, meaning that we don't get a bounty for murder. Thanks, Skyrim Law. Once the contracts are done with, we go talk to this dude Amond, and he wants us to kill a few people. Let's see, Dikas, Marandrujo, Anoriath, the Emperor's cousin. Wait, the Emperor's cousin? Well, <laughs> at least he doesn't want us to kill the Emperor. The first three are simple enough, and after killing Victoria, we take her wedding dress and dip out right as everyone starts killing one another. When we get back to the Sanctuary, we get the Bound Until Death achievement, meaning that we're now almost 16 hours in and only just over halfway done. We then need to kill the Emperor's guard. Okay, I guess that we're still not killing the Emperor, so it shouldn't be too bad. We gank him and plant an incriminating letter on his body, and after we head back to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, we find out that Cicero's gone mad. He fled to the Dawnstar Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, and it's our job to go deal with them. Astrid appreciates our gung-ho nature, and rewards us with our new best friend Shadowmere. We make it to the Sanctuary, and after a long game of cat and mouse, we find Cicero but he's not going down without a fight. Unfortunately for him, we kill him before he can even draw his weapon. With that good work done, it's on to our next job. Killing the Emperor. <sighs> I knew it was going to happen at some point. So obviously one does not simply walk into the Emperor's room, so we'll need to disguise ourselves. We find out that he's supposed to get a meal from an anonymous master chef, so we find their identity, kill them, and then we poison his food. Unfortunately, that was just a decoy emperor, and we end up getting caught. After fighting our way out, we head back to the Dark Brotherhood and find out that it's been raided by the Imperials. We take them out and have another heart-to-heart -heart sesh with the Night Mother, and when we get out, we find Astrid burnt to a crisp. Her last wish is for us to kill her, but that goes against our moral code. Mommy then tells us that the Emperor contract is still ongoing, so we need to track down the real Emperor and kill him. We head back to Amond, who claims to not have known about the Emperor decoy, but he just so happens to know where the real one is, so I'm not really sure how much I believe him. 
He tells us that the real Emperor is on a ship just outside of Solitude, and after heading there and taking out his guards, he surrenders and we kill him anyways. We then head back to Amon for a payment, and after he tells us where it is, we kill him just for fun. We then head to get our payment, which is a whopping 20,000 smackaroons, moving us a lot closer to the Golden Touch achievement. After reporting this back to the Dawnstar Sanctuary, we get the final achievement for the Dark Brotherhood, Hail Sithis. Now we've only got one faction left, the College of Winterhold. We head to Winterhold, where Courier immediately intercepts us to give us a letter of inheritance from Amond. Seems a little odd, but hey, I'm not complaining. After proving our skills to Feralda at the college entrance, we get the achievement Gatekeeper. We then further prove our mystical expertise by holding this lesser ward up for 4 seconds, and Tolkdir suggests that we take a field trip to some local ruins. After finding a secret passage, we get interrupted by the super boring ghost dude or whatever, it's not really important. We make our way through the rest of the dungeon until we find ourselves in front of a weird glowing orb. No, not that one, a different one. This one is guarded by a draugr named Yurik Galdermansen or something, but we kill him in two hits. Wolfdeer says that he's going to hang back to keep an eye on the orb, and we need to go report our findings to the Archmage Savos Arin. He tells us that we should do some research on it, and after talking to the librarian, we learn that we need to go get some books for some evil wizards. So we clear the dungeon, skip a pretty cool boss fight, and take the books. After heading back to the librarian, he says that Tolfdir might know more. Tolfdir then says, mm, let me think about that, and then he doesn't elaborate. Cool, so all of that felt pretty pointless. On Kano, a Thalmor who's been hanging around the college for some reason says that the boring ghost is back to talk to us. Whatever he says is important though, and the person with the real answers is hidden underneath the college. Hidden in the midden. This person isn't really a person, it's the Augur of Dunlane. This dude tells us two things. Number one, ancano has been down there talking to him. And number two, we need the Staff of Magnus in order to control the weird orb, the Eye of Magnus. We head back to Savos Aaron, telling him about the weird staff, and he tells us to go to some dwarven ruins to figure out where the staff is. Of course, we can't go five hours without fighting the Falmer. So we clear out the Falmer and the dwarven mechanisms, and at the end of the dungeon, we find a weird dude and a weird thing. After fiddling with the weird thing for a bit, it reveals itself to be a map. The weird dude is able to read the map, and he discerns that the staff is located in a dungeon called the Labyrinthian. We head back to the College of Winterhold to find Ancano doing some weird magic on the eye, which then explodes with a burst of energy. When we come to, we get the achievement Revealing the Unseen, and find Savos Aran. Boy does he look like he's seen better days. Apparently that burst caused a bunch of magic anomalies to pop up, so after taking care of them, we head to get the staff at the Labyrinthian. In here, I'm sure that there's a lot of cool story with all these ghosts, but we don't have time for that. What we do have time for though, is totally wicked undead dragon fights. After making our way through the rest of the dungeon, we find the souped up dragon priest, who is by far the most difficult enemy we've faced yet. I mean, he almost got us down to a quarter of our health. Impressive. On his body, we find the Staff of Magnus, and as we're making our way out, we get stopped by another Thalmor dude, who immediately gets owned. Once we're back at the college, we see that Ancano hasn't learned his lesson, and is back to fiddling with the eye. We decide that we had enough with this guy, and we start the most epic battle of all time. After killing him in one hit, we save the day and get the, the Eye of Magnus achievement, marking the end of day 3 and the end of the factions. Right? Hello. Starting day 4, we now only have one big story chunk left, the Dragonborn DLC. You know what that means. That's right. It's time for Solstime. This nice ass she am. What is, is that a fiery mud crab? Yeah, I'll be careful, don't worry. I can avoid a trap. I can avoid a trap. I don't want to look at that. That seems gross. Are you? Ah, shit. Shit. Get me out of here. I'm going to jump off a building. Oh, shit. Sorry. I am A A V. All about vessels. You can buzz off. No offense. I just hate you. Serana, so crush their skull. Okay, this is not a good time for my mouse to bug out. <laughs> I've got an army behind me. This was such a bad idea. I thought it'd be funny, but it wasn't worth it. Oh my god. 
When we get there, we're immediately attacked by a dragon, and after killing it, we absorb our 20th dragon soul, granting us the Dragon Hunter achievement. After asking around, we learn that we need to go to the Temple of Mirak. In here are a bunch of cultists, the second word of the dragon aspect, and a black book. After reading it, we get a lecture from Mr. Tentacle Guy himself, Mirak. After his minions with interesting anatomy send us back, we get the, the Temple of Mirak achievement, and we head to a local village that's home to the Skull Tribe. They inform us that we need to go learn the shout Bendwell in order to help them out. Fine by us, because it's the 20th shout we learn, granting us the Thum Master achievement. Now, we've got to run across Solstheim, cleansing all the stones, and once we're done, we head to Telmithrin. Here, we get a new quest where we need to go to some dwarven ruins to get a black book. Thankfully for us, it's in the very first room. Unfortunately for us, it's locked. In order to unlock it, we just need to solve this very simple puzzle that I definitely didn't need to look up a guide on IGN for. 20 minutes later, we finish the puzzle and read the black book, giving us the, the Path of Knowledge achievement. At the end of the book, we have a nice little chat with our new best friend, Hermaeus Mora. He teaches us the second word of Bend Will, and is all like, Blub blub blub, I'll teach you the final word, but only if you give me the secrets of the stall, blub blub blub. Sure blob, whatever. We get a power that makes our unrelenting force shout literally disintegrate people, and after heading out of the ruins, we get jumped by the sad looking dragon. Like, come on, you could not make a dragon look more silly. When we head back to the Skull Village, we convince the leader to give up their secrets. This is when Hermaeus Mora pops out and turns us into a scene from a tasteful animated movie. Sucks for that guy, but HM fulfills his end of the bargain and teaches us the final word of Bend Will. Now that we're ready for a rematch with Mirak, we reread the Black Book from the beginning and after navigating through Tentacle Land for a while, we find the final word of Dragon Aspect, meaning that we can check Dragon Aspect off the list. We use the final word of Bend Will on one of these silly guys from before, and now we get to ride a freaking dragon. I wish so bad that we were able to actually control them, but instead, it just feels super clunky, and after a few minutes, it pretty much loses all of its novelty. At the very least though, the dragon was able to take us straight to Mirak, and after a short introduction, we take him out in just under 60 seconds. Our good buddy Hermaeus Mora comes in to finish the job, and while he does that, we get the At the Summit of Apocrypha achievement, meaning that we're now done with all of our story quests. There are still 5 Dragonborn achievements left, but they shouldn't be too hard to finish. We go invade this little goblin village in this funky spider cave to read a couple of black books, finishing off Hidden Knowledge achievement. And as we're walking around, we discover our 30th location, giving us the Solstheim Explorer achievement. On a side note, really Bethesda, you just remixed the Explorer achievement from the base game and slapped Solstheim in front of it and call it a day? Respect. Unfortunately, crafting an item out of Stalrum isn't as easy as it sounds. First, we need to do a quest to get a special pickaxe. Then we gotta do a quest to learn how to craft it. Then we need level 80 smithing. Wait, what? Level 80 smithing just to craft a silly little Stalrim dagger? Put me on Solstheim and I'll do a sharp piece of Stalrim to a stick and that would just be about the same thing. Level 80 smithing. Oh, this sucks so bad, I did not realize that. Oh my god, okay. So we decide that our best course of action is to get rid of our lycanthropy and get married so we can have the maximum XP bonus. And after doing so with our beloved Farkas, we get the achievement married and realize that we need to sleep in a house together in order to get the bonus, so it was pretty useless. We then go ahead and sell everything we own because it's much less useful to us now that we don't need to do quests. But what I neglected to think about was all the Daedric quests that we still need to do. With our money, we buy every single iron, silver, and gold ingot and ore we can get our hands on. In the process, we get arrested by the Solitude Guards for the whole Killing the Emperor fiasco. <laughs> okay, take me to jail. Fine. This is okay. We need to uh, escape jail as part of a an achievement. Okay, we'll do that later. Thankfully for us, we won't be totally wasting our time while smithing. We still need to build three houses, so during this process, we make a metric butt-ton of locks, hinges, iron fittings, and nails. While grinding out smithing levels, we hit level 25, granting us the expert achievement. 
All of the smithing is weighing down on our pockets though, so we decide to eat a bunch of ingredients to lose some weight. Oh my god. I just hit that walkie slush. Holy cow. After going around to all the vendors in Skyrim, we end up selling most of the stuff we own and finally hit the 100,000 gold mark, meaning that we get the golden touch achievement. Now that we've got the money, it's time to spend it. First off, it's time for Soul's time, and we head there to buy a house. Never mind, you can't just buy a house. What you really need to do is a sequence of quests that involve assault, theft, fraud, DUI, breaking and entering, solicitation, armed robbery, shoplifting, aggravated assault on a police officer, and more. Once we're done, we're gifted a house in Ravenrock, and we're gifted the Ravenrock owner achievement. We then head back to Skyrim and buy the house in Whiterun for a double play with the citizen achievement. After grinding out a few more levels of smithing, we head to Yorling Greymane and pay him for the remaining 10 levels. Now that we're finally level 80 smithing, we can craft a Stallroom Dagger, marking off the Stallroom Crafter achievement. Now that that unexpected hurdle is out of the way, it's time for an expected hurdle, Hearthfire. You see, we need to build not one, not two, but three entire houses, each with three wings on them. I'll save you a lot of time and just skip to the end because this was the second most boring part of the whole speedrun. One interesting thing of note though, we ended up chopping wood and cooking food, finishing off the hard worker achievement. And by the end of the day, we also got the landowner, land baron, architect, and master architect achievements, almost rounding out all of Hearthfire. Thankfully, we were able to get past the unexpected roadblock today, and tomorrow should be smooth sailing. It's day 5, and the ship has crashed. After doing some final checks to make sure we were on track to finish the speedrun today, we realized that we're missing one achievement from what we thought we needed. What things don't we have? Get a skill to 100, adopt a child, complete 10 quests, side quests, 350 dungeons, reach level 50, read 50 skill books. Oh, we still haven't found 13 standing stones. Um, we haven't returned to the Thieves Guild to its former glory? Huh? Okay, so I assumed that we got this quest when we finished the uh, the main Thieves Guild story, but apparently not. We need to assume the title of Guildmaster by performing four special jobs across the major hold of Skyrim. In order to get a special job, you must first finish five smaller jobs. Okay, well, we aren't as close as I thought we were. I still am hoping that we'll be able to finish it today. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. <sighs> so we've got more on our plate than I thought we did. At least this isn't completely pointless as we can use this as an opportunity to pick some pockets. There are two people that can offer us jobs, Vex and Delvin Mallory. We need to do four jobs in Markarth, Solitude, Whiterun, and Windhelm. The problem with this is that it's random where a job will be located. Additionally, it's possible to get Rift in as a job location, which is useless to us. So each time we take a job, there's a 1 in 5 chance that it's pointless, and those odds increase as we finish all of the jobs for a particular city. Because of this, what should have been a 45 minute quest ended up taking about an hour and a half, but in the end, we're finally rewarded with the guild leader armor and the one with the shadows achievement. Now we can start what we were supposed to start today with, the Daedric artifacts. We need 15 of them for an achievement, but it's not exactly as easy as it sounds. You see, for some of these quests, it's possible to choose the wrong option, meaning that the artifact is impossible to get. On top of this, there are some options that just don't count towards the achievement. Like, why does the Rueful Axe not count, but the Mask of Plavica's Vial does? Why does the Skeleton Key not count? Finally, if we had accidentally killed the quest giver at any point previously in the run, it would be impossible to start that quest. So, we start the Daedric quests, knowing that any wrong move could have horrible repercussions. Starting us off in this hellish gauntlet is discerning the transmundane. Back over at our buddy Septimus's hideout, we get a fun little tool that we need to use to harvest the blood of every type of elf. Then our friend Hermaeus Mora shows up again, who introduces himself because this happened before the Dragonborn DLC came out, and he talks about wanting us to serve him. Sure, Blob, whatever. Instead of trying to find each type of elf, 
we decide to do some other Daedric quests, hoping to harvest all the blood we need in the process. We head to Solitude and enter the Pelagius Wing of the Blue Castle, where we get teleported to Sheagorath, the Daedric Prince of Silliness. After using his staff to cause some havoc, he likes the cut of our jib and rewards us with the Wabajak. We then head to Markarth and we have to face the worst Daedric Prince of all, Molag Ball, the Daedric Prince of Unskippable Dialogue. Just kidding, all of the Daedric deities have unskippable dialogue, which is a speedrunner's worst nightmare. Ball Guy wants us to go rescue this guy from some Forsworn and while doing so, we get the Delver achievement for clearing 50 dungeons. Since Molag wanted us to save this dude, he must be one of the nicest Daedric Princes… never mind. He just wanted us to torture this guy. After we do so, he rewards us with his mace though, meaning that we're one step closer to the achievement. We then head to Dawnstar where the new museum opened up, and the owner wants us to go recover some artifacts. After collecting them all, we head to the shrine of Mayrunes Dagon, and we kill the museum owner, granting us the Mayrunes Razor. Not far from here is a dragon, so we head over there and after riding it, we get the Dragon Rider achievement. Back in Dawnstar, we talk to a priest who seems to know the cause of everyone's nightmares. So we head to a castle overlooking the town, and after we head in, a bunch of really sleepy people start attacking us. After a bunch of weird mystical mumbo jumbo, we disable the barrier around the staff that's causing the nightmares. Then Mara chimes in, telling us that the priest is actually a bad guy and that we should kill him and take the staff for ourselves. Whatever you say, my queen. After finishing that, we head to Whiterun, where we learn that the Jarl's kid has been hearing voices. After some investigation, we have a nice conversation with Adora who claims to be Mephala and once we head inside, we're rewarded with the Ebony Blade. Next up on the list, we head to the Shrine of Azura, where we learn that we need to find an Elven Mage. Luckily for us, we've got an Elven Mage right here, and he says that we now need to go find Azura's Star. After retrieving it from a bunch of Necromancers, we head back to the Shrine, where we get put into the Star? I'm not really sure how it works, but we don't have time for questions. In here, we need to cleanse it from some weirdo, and after killing him, we get pulled back out of the Star, and Azura lets us keep it. After heading to Falkreath, we have a fun conversation with our new best friend Barbus, who leads us to his owner's cave. In here, we find a shrine to Clavicus Vile, and he says that we need to go retrieve his axe, and in return, he'll give us his boon. After heading to a different cave, we show off the power of Mayrun's razor. Uh, insta-kill. 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 Boom! Insta-killed. And we collect the Rufal axe. When we head back to Mr. Mount Rushmore, he says that he'll let us keep the axe as long as we kill Barbus with it. We could never dream of such a thing, and also, it doesn't count as a Daedric artifact. After giving him the axe, he rewards us with the Mask of Clavicus Vile. Regarding the elf blood, at this point, we only need Falmer blood. So, we head back into Blackreach, collecting some Falmer blood and saying hello to the giant glowing orb, before heading back to Old Septimus. Elated that he's finally able to open the cube, he's so excited that he disintegrates. <laughs> no, I, never, I don't remember that happening before. <laughs> uh, sorry about that dude, uh, I wasn't uh, expecting that to happen. <laughs> we then take the Ogma Infinium, and after reading it, we gain 5 levels in each of our Thief skills. This puts us at level 30, meaning that we immediately get attacked by a Boethia cultist. We'll put that on the back burner for now, and we head to Periite Shrine. We need to collect some items in order to summon Periite, and after doing so, he says this. I would have a no than a uh, mm hmm yes, very powerful. Essentially, he just wants us to kill a dude. Of course though, it's not that simple. You see, for some reason, the developers decided to have most Daedra quests have cool but small sublocations, like the Wabajak or Azura Star quest, but for this Daedra quest, we need to navigate this massive Dwemer ruins filled with a ton of enemies for no real discernible reason. At the end of the dungeon, we kill the dude we came for, and after heading back to Periite, he blesses us with this information. I'm not uh, really understanding what you're saying, dude. His will meet again. Will yep, yes sir. Despite us not quite following, he still gives us the Spellbreaker Shield and we begin the quest Boethia's Calling. We need to swap out Serana for a more… expendable follower, so we head to Whiterun and employ Janasa. Don't worry about what's about to happen though, there's nothing weird that's about to happen. 
I just think that you should spend the $500 that I just gave you well. Almost as if it was your last. Back at the shrine to Boethia, we kindly ask Janasa to stand on this cool glowing platform where we then murder her in cold blood. Apparently, the other cultists don't really like this and they all start attacking us. Little do they know that we're pretty much unkillable at this point and we take them down easily. We then head to a mine, kill the bandits inside, and become the new champion of Boethia, looting the ebony male off the previous one's body. Okay, and there's one dude that's very, very dedicated to his job here. Heading back to Falkreath, we find a bunch of drama llamas talking about a kid that got werewolfed and they just so happen to have the culprit, Sending, locked up in jail. After talking with him, he gives us this cool ring and tells us to kill the great beast, whatever that means. Instead of a great beast, we kill this white elk and its ghost just happens to be the aspect of Percine. Ghost elk wants us to go on a fun little hunt for Sending and after killing and skinning him, Percine grants us the savior's hide. Thanks, ghost elk. Next up on the list is Malakath's quest, and after heading to an orc stronghold, we perform a ritual to summon him. Apparently, these guys have been having some giant problems, and I mean huge. Their huge problem is that they let giants take over the shrine to Malakath, so me and an orc chief head to the giant's lair. After taking out some small giants and making our way through the lair, we encounter a giant giant. After killing him with soul terror, which resurrects him to fight for us, the orc chief turns on us in order to take all the credit. Clearly, he must not have been paying attention because we have a giant on our side. After the two of us take him out, we head back to the stronghold and Malakath rewards us with the Warhammer Volendrung. Then we head back to Markarth, where some weird things have been going on in the Hall of the Dead. This nice young man lets us inside, where this lady Aeola claims to have been munching on these people's bones. Uh, okay. She wants to meet us at Reachcliff Cave, and after clearing out all the Draugr inside, Aeola says that she wants to have a big dinner and that we should invite that nice priest from before. Now, I'm never one to turn down a dinner, so we bring him to the party. Aeola wants us to kill and eat him, which is not what I thought she meant when she said that we should have him for dinner. After doing so though, we get the Ring of Namira, and we now only have one Daedric quest left. This one is the longest one. There are so many twists and turns, so many side quests, it's not going to be good for our time. That would be the case typically, but the game lets us speed it up quite a bit. After locating Sam Gwavine and challenging him to a drinking contest, we black out and wake up in Markarth. We typically would need to go across Skyrim doing random side quests to get information about our bender last night, but thankfully we've got enough gold that we can bribe everyone to give us this information. The info eventually leads us to a dungeon, and at the end of it is a funky portal to a different dimension. And here, we find out that Sam Govine was actually Sanguine, and he gives us his staff, meaning that we've got 15 Daedric artifacts and the Oblivion Walker achievement. Did I get the achievement? Let me know if you need someone to get or take a yes. fire and I'll send Oh my over. god, yes. Oh my god. Okay, we could finally continue. Now, there's only one big thing we have left to do. All we need to do is get to level 78. Ah, <sighs> this is going to take a while. We've got a plan and from the research I did beforehand, I think illusion will be the quickest way to do this. We go by the muffle spell and spend the next 10 minutes grinding to level 100 illusion. Once we've got it, we get the skill master achievement and we head to the college of Winterhold to do the master illusion quests. After using our wizard eyes to find some books scattered across the college, we're able to learn the master level illusion spells. There's two that are important to us, Call to Arms and Harmony. These are nice because they level illusion quickly and it doesn't make people mad when we cast it on them. So we legendary our illusion skill and head to Riften to start grinding levels. This is the reason that we've been putting points in the Magicka throughout the speedrun, but unfortunately, we didn't put enough in to be able to cast Harmony. That's okay though, because we can still cast Call to Arms, and there's surely not a big difference between the two, right? While we're grinding levels, I'll take this time to mention that only a small percentage of you are still watching, so I humbly ask you to like the video and comment what your favorite skill is in Skyrim, because the engagement really helps me out. Now that I'm done shilling, it takes us about 17 minutes in order to get back to level 100 illusion, and I come up with an idea. Jewelry with legendary. Okay, level 100. Let's see if this is possible. Okay, so. Now we are going to begin 
casting Harmony. We're gonna begin casting it. Now we're gonna go here. We're gonna legendary the skill. And hopefully it lets us finish the cast. If it lets us finish the cast, then that's gonna be awesome. Okay, awesome. We get a level up here. That got us to level 47 illusion just with that one cast. Oh my god. Now that we know how much better Harmony is at leveling up, we decide that we can't go back. The problem is, we're way off being able to cast Harmony. I tried enchanting, I tried alchemy, there was nothing I could do to cast it. So back to the call to arms grind. I cast, and I wait. Again, and again, and again. As I level up, it takes more and more casts to get to the next level. Right as my spirit was about to break, I remember something. Remember those stones that I cleansed back in Soul's time? Well, one of them actually lets me cast spells at 75% reduced cost for 60 seconds. Yes, I was dumb for not remembering this earlier, but honestly, I don't care. After getting the power, we're free to cast Harmony as many times as we want. It only takes us about 5 casts to get to level 100 illusion now, compared to the dozens that it took with Call to Arms. Now that we've upgraded it, it only takes us about half an hour to get from level 43 to level 76, and in the process, we get the Master Achievement for reaching level 50. Now that we're done leveling, we can encounter legendary dragons, or so I thought. If you remember, earlier I said that we need to be level 78 to encounter legendary dragons, but for some reason I mistakenly thought it was level 76. Thankfully, instead of trying to chase one down, we decide to finish off the other achievements first. After about 7 hours of doing Daedric quests and leveling up, my brain was completely fried, shown here by this attempt at speaking. I can make a child's room in Bree's home? Oh! Hey, thank you very much for telling me that. I didn't know that. I assumed that uh, since it was part of... since... Uh, my brain turned off. Yeah, I assumed that uh, since... My brain turned off again. <laughs> um, since adoption was part of... My brain turned off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, since adoption was part of uh, Hearthfire, that uh, my... I... What's happening? <laughs> I've got some sort of brain fog. I thought that since adoption was part of Hearthfire, you had to do it at one of the homes that you built. There we go. Finally, a completed sentence. After installing a child's bedroom at my house in Whiterun, we adopt Lucia, marking off the proud parent achievement. We then need to finish a couple side quests, so we retrieve some Elder Gleam sap for Danica Pure Spring and help out some lovers for the Church of Mara. It's during this that we realize that we need to be level 78 to encounter a legendary dragon, so we head to Riften to get a couple more levels in and then turn in our final side quest, granting us the sideways achievement. Boom! Nice. Now, I said before that leveling to 78 was the last big thing we had to do, but it wasn't the last boring thing we had to do. We still need to find 8 more skill books. After almost 45 minutes of looking up skill book locations, finding it, and reading it only to realize that we've already read it and trying again, we finally get the 70th achievement, Reader. The final ones, thankfully, are all straightforward. We head to Whiterun, commit a crime, get thrown in jail, and then escape. This gives us the wanted achievement, and once we get out, we pickpocket everyone we find with the help of these insane boots, and after a while, we finally finish off the thief achievement. The next one is another easy one, we just need to find the rest of the standing stones, and while we're doing it, we get incredibly lucky and find a legendary dragon. I think that's a legendary dragon. Oh my god. Dragon Rin, Dragon Rin. I missed. Oh, it's got the curved horns. No, don't fly away, don't fly away. Oh my god. Please come back. Dude, it keeps dodging me. Fight me. Fight me, fight me. Yeah, get down here. Come on, dude. No way. Yes, make one more pass, one more pass. See, what is that? <laughs> he flies straight for a trillion years, and then all of a sudden he turns.
Uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's cool. Uh, actually, I was, I wanted that to happen. Okay, so maybe we missed a few dragon wrens. So, sue me. I hang firm in my belief that a human was controlling that dragon to make sure I couldn't hit it. No point in crying over spilled milk, so we go ahead and find the remaining stones, granting us the standing stones achievement. We then decide to start heading to various dragon lairs across Skyrim, and we get lucky and find another legendary dragon at the second one we go to. This might be a legendary. This is a legendary. Oh my god. Oh my god, we're doing it. Okay. Let's go. Oh my god, this guy's so strong. <laughs> Thankfully we don't take any damage because of our power. Yes! Yes! Yes. Marking off the legend achievement, there's only one thing left to do. We need to become a master criminal. Now is the time that we can take out all of the pain and frustration that's been building up over the course of the last 32 hours. We head to Riften, Windhelm, Winterhold, all of the major cities, committing crimes to get a bounty of 1,000 gold in all of them. <laughs> I disintegrated that dude. All of these hours of suffering, culminating at the very heart of Skyrim. You know, as we get a new Bethesda game, I'm going to miss having fun in Skyrim. Exploring new things and finding new quests, Skyrim will always have a place in my heart. So I think that it would be fitting to give this speedrun the most satisfying ending possible. Do you get to the Cloud District very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. Who's <laughs> there? <laughs> Oh. Oh. Time. That's time. Seventy five. Thirty two hours. Forty eight minutes. Thirty one seconds. Let me just check Steam real quick. One hundred percent. You've unlocked all the achievements. Oh my god. That was awful. That was genuinely awful. And I would not recommend that to anyone. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my Twitch chat, as without them, I wouldn't have been able to stay sane throughout this challenge. And if you want to join them, you can head over to my Twitch channel. The link's in the description. I'm so happy this is over. All right, well, uh, I, uh, I really hope that, uh, you could enjoy all of my pain, all of my suffering, all of my turmoil, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. And finally, last but not least, thanks for watching.